joining us now is Joe and Chris from the Lions Club, uh, who are here to talk about the Jubilee. Welcome, guys. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. All right. Us. So, what do you got planned this weekend? Things kick off on Thursday? Thursday, what, 5 o'clock? Uh, I think that's correct. Yep, 5 o'clock, we kick off the carnival ride till about 10, and then we open noon to 12, Saturday and Sunday, and yeah, or Saturday, Friday. Friday and Saturday, Friday and, and then Sunday, noon to 6. Okay. Is Skurbeck back with all the rides and games and everything? Oh, yes. Yep, yep we've had them. Uh, we've been using them since 2010. Great company to work with. They're Michigan-based, so you can't ask for anything better. Yeah. So what can a, a visitor expect uh, when they show up in downtown Lake Orion? Oh, the typical carnival rides. I'm sure they'll have the Ferris wheel. The uh, pirate ship's always a big attraction. Um, I don't know what new ones they have this year. Do you know? Uh, any? It wasn't given a list yet, okay. but I know they're talking about the slide. Um, we're also going to have the um, carnival games over off the Broadway area mm -hmm. uh, on the south side of Broadway there. Um, we're also going to have a scavenger hunt for the kids on Saturday. So all the young kids... Um, we're going to be doing a good, good scavenger hunt that we've got set up. I'll be helping one of the other members uh, lead that. It's uh, noon on Saturday. Mm -hmm. We'll be meeting downtown right there at the um, at Flint and Broadway. Okay. So it's going to be warm. Will there be a place where uh, adults can get beverages? Well, we don't have air conditioning in the beer tent, but <laughs> it's uh, it's a wide open beer tent. We've got um, some live entertainment, local entertainment. Uh, performing both Friday and Saturday nights down there. Um, and of course, all the wonderful restaurants in downtown will have their ACs on, so yeah. you want to get a quick bite to eat or something alcoholic not from the beer tent. <laughs> I'm sure the local businesses will appreciate that. Yeah, they're going to be very popular, uh, I think, this year with the heat, uh, that crossover. But what, what would um, you guys say is the most popular uh, part of the Jubilee? I mean, I, I've uh, been going to it for many years. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, you said it, uh, the original kind of started in 80, 1980? Um, in, in 1976, they started it. They had a festival for the to coincide with the bicentennial okay. over the 4th of July weekend. Um, and then back starting in uh, 1980, they started a festival. Um, uh, I'm not sure if they had a carnival, but over the years, it grew into a big carnival uh, with a beer tent. And it... Um, <coughs> grew from there. Um, I think we've only missed one year since the 20 years I've been involved in it, and that was due to the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, nobody had one that year. Right. There um, was a period of time where it moved over to Canterbury when there was road construction going on in downtown Lake Orion. Yep, uh, we, we had a challenge in 2010 where we had to move it, and we ended up going to uh, Canterbury Village. Um, the Aldrich family was very gracious in letting us host it there. And then in 2014, when they sold the uh, Christmas barn to the church, mm -hmm. we um, were able to relocate back downtown and it was very well received from the uh, business community. Uh, we worked with the DDA, they did a survey and it was overwhelming support for us to come back downtown. And um, seeing the difference between Canterbury and, and downtown, it's just, downtown was the place for it to be yeah that's where it belongs so it's uh, you know the rest as they say is history it's been great now how does the uh, Lions Club benefit from the Jubilee I, I mean every year we say it's the the largest fundraiser of the year is that true how does it benefit the Lions Club well it goes to support our community-based programs I mean our, our biggest signature project of the year that almost the whole community probably knows about is our Christmas basket program. Mm -hmm. um, I know you filmed it. I know we've seen you there, Matt, uh, helping out packing boxes. I mean, we deliver food to 200 plus families, you know, about another 75 to 100 senior citizens benefit from it. Um, the whole community comes out. It's a huge undertaking. Um, we get volunteers from the high school, from the, we have elementary students. We even had the uh, volunteer children from the Pine Tree Elementary to come out and help put our boxes together. Oh, yes. um, throughout the year, we've got our kids site program, um, which we're going to have a kids site trailer downtown during the Jubilee to test for, you know, eyesight issues with with the little ones. Um, it's the only project that we do to help prevent blindness. Everything we seem to do is to help blind people through, you know, leader dog mm -hmm. um, and other things. But uh, the kids site helps catch. Um, eye problems with these young kids very early in their life and can help prevent, you know, 
major issues down the road. Yeah. I saw that uh, there's going to be some leader dogs on site uh, over the weekend. Talk about the Lions Club's relationship with leader dogs for the blind. Um, the leader dog was founded through the Lions Club back in, um, I think it was around the same time we were formed in 1938. Um, and it was based out of Rochester and it's, you know, grown international. Um, one of our members, um, and in our club has raised several leader dogs um, over his uh, career. They they take the puppies and they raise the the you know, puppy raisers. Will raise the will take care of the dog for about a year. And one of his is over in Spain, helping uh, a blind person get around town and 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 live, having the leader dog, you know, with him. Mm. So yeah, that's a great program. It's really awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have we'll have some puppies down there. The puppies need to be around crowds to gain the skills to be around crowds when they're dealing with you know a blind person taking them around because they have to you know travel with the person forever basically. So they have to deal with the crowds and the Jubilee is a perfect atmosphere for that kind of stuff with the loud noises from the carnival and the music and the crowds. You guys also collect uh, used eyeglasses and, and distribute those. Is that still part of your uh, mission? I know you used to do that. Oh, yes, we still okay. do that. In fact, uh, one of our members was able to find uh, a used, a uh, couple of used mailboxes that... Um, I thought I saw one maybe by the, the Wonder Cleaners. Uh, yeah, that's okay. the one. Yep. Yeah, and that's uh, really cool because I don't, I don't know about uh, you. Well, I, I wear glasses at night. Um, uh, because I wear contacts during the day, but yeah, I, when I've got old glasses, uh, um, I've never known what to do with them. And having uh, having an outlet yep. that's actually going to help somebody else. And if they're like scratched or things like that, you guys do repairs, or they're still valued. I, they, to them? they evaluate them. Okay, so yeah. we should donate them, and then you guys can determine if they can be used. We, we collect them, and then we have a regional uh, member with the District of uh, Michigan. They take them and then they send them out to the California area because the eyeglasses are actually sent overseas. And, uh, really? Yeah, because um, we just have to follow some of the rules with the eyeglass association. Yeah, it's, a, it's a basically against the law to recycle them in the United States. No so we, we don't wow. do any of them in here. So we gather them up. They do over, uh, I think it's Muskegon area. They have a, a group out of Muskegon that does it. And then um, besides the yellow mailbox there with the Lions logo on it, there are all the eyeglass companies in the Oxford and Lincoln area that we have one member goes around every month and anyone can just donate their glasses there. Hmm. And then we collect them, gather them all up, send them out to Muskegon, and then they take them, send them out to California after they've cleaned them and checked them over. And if they're damaged, we take the damaged parts out, but we do what we can, but it's, um, more of just a putting, paying it forward yeah. to other people is well, what hey, we're trying the world, to do. We're, so. all, we're all one community. If right, and we're international, out. so it's also uh, going to the overseas, so therefore it's helping the clubs that are, are international brothers and sisters over there. And you guys started, it was started about sight and, and uh, helping the blind, but I, I know that every time I'm involved in something to help our community, you guys are involved. So is there a, is there a, a scope to your mission or if people need help, lions are there. It's what it feels like to we're, me anyway. We're a community service organization. Um, back, I forget, it was sometime in the 20s, Helen Keller addressed the Lions Club International Convention and challenged us to be leaders of the blind. So that's how we got involved, you know, with um, the blind. And then um, several years later, she addressed us again and asked us to help with hearing. So we also provide hearing aids for people. Okay. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll help, help people with that too, as well as providing eyeglasses. That's where a lot of our funds go to, providing eyeglasses for those in need. Somebody will contact our eyeglass chairperson and say, you know, so-and-so, I need glasses, and we'll send them to a do eye doc local eye doctor who provides the um, diagnosis, and, you know, we pay the bill. You guys are fantastic. Thank now you. You, uh, you mentioned Wonder Cleaners a moment ago. Is that the same location where they're selling flares? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Which, no, which is a fundraiser for you That's one guys of our too. members. Yeah. 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 Talk about Flare Night. It's flare Night is going to be on Jul uh, the Friday. Uh, July 5th. July 5th. Yep. 
they're going to, they're selling flares to the residents on the lake and we do it every year in fact we've even set a uh, record for the most flares around a populated lake to where the whole lake just turns red mm, with the flow. So cool. I mean it's yeah. it's beautiful and um, but we're selling them again this year. We do it every year. Um, they sell them at Wonder Cleaners. They also have uh, some members that go out on a boat on the lake, sell them right there for the residents there. Yeah. And uh, we're selling them until we're sold out. We do it every year, and we sell out every year. I got my case. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. You're but uh, we, we just, uh, it's, it's another fundraiser that we use, and the money goes to our general funds, and um, we've also put aside to earmark for next year's flares. But... It's just also a way of the community getting together. It's what we're trying to do too. Besides helping the community, we want to show that we're out here to help, but be part of the community. And that's what we want to do. We want people to know that we're here to help if we can, of everything that we can do. But if we can't do certain things, we'll contact other groups or organizations that can help us help them. It, it's Mainly, we're sometimes we're a, st a starting st step for someone, and if we can't do it, we'll send them into the right direction. We're not just going to push someone off. We always try to help someone get the right step and where they need to go. Okay. Now, uh, I, I cover Flare Night every year, and and I did a little research that it's it started during uh, or after World War II. It was kind mm -hmm. of a celebration of the end of World War II and it's been going on ever okay. since. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I set up over at Pelton's Point waiting f t uh, at like 10 p.m. to see them all get lit <laughs> up and it is a spectacle. It is really amazing to see and uh, maybe I can talk Jenny over at the township to get the drone up in the air this year and really get a nice aerial shot of the lake because it is red flares as far as the eye can see yeah. around. A couple years ago our, our chairperson Rick Rice, um, I think they paid a pilot to fly over Lake Orion. No it was the year they were trying to get um, in the Guinness Book of World Records. Right, right. And they, uh, they had <laughs> pictures from it and the, the, I think the guy, his pay was being able to sell the pictures. Um, some of those pictures still might be on our website. Wow, uh, I'd we love just redesigned to see those. our website, so and I think some of those pictures are still there. But there, are, there are some pictures. If you get a hold of Rick; he might be able to get you a picture. Yeah, there, I'd like to share it out. Well, I'm actually going to try and drag this guy out onto the lake yeah. um, <laughs> to see it up uh, up close and travel around. And I bet you we could get Lee Smith, who's always willing to jump in and help, who's getting very good with his drone. Uh, we could probably get him to join us, and we could do a, yeah. uh, a double. Uh, uh, get the, the drone and your your footage. Uh, so. I gotta say, being on a pontoon on the lake on Fourth of July weekend is a tough job, but somebody's <laughs> gotta do it. Oh. And I step up, give of my time yes. to be on that pontoon. You know, <laughs> nobody puts more into. I, in, in all seriousness, you're at everything, and you are amazing. <laughs> but I promise to uh, you know keep us safe. And uh, it is <laughs> it is a wild night on the lake because you know our lake can get crowded on the weekends. It is never more crowded than what you see um, on the uh, flare night and fireworks night. Yeah. And when you're driving around, you definitely have to be on your game. Yeah. Um, it is not for the uh, the timid uh, <laughs> because there the are rules. there are boats everywhere. Well, and <laughs> and there are many that don't uh, they don't know what the rules are to follow. <laughs> um, but uh, but it is such a great energy, um, and you know obviously you guys are a huge part. Of, uh, of making this happen and the tradition. Um, you, one of the things that I, uh, you had mentioned was the, um, the scavenger hunt. Uh, did, did the, uh, so we'll get back to kind of, because this is just a few days away. I mean, yep. you guys, I think you said tomorrow morning, uh, um, five o'clock, you're gonna be downtown uh, getting to me work? Me and a, few, a couple of dozen or a dozen uh, volunteers from the Lions Club are gonna be out at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm actually the chairperson this year for the Jubilee. I'm one of the two chairs. There's actually three of us. Um, I'm in with the carnival side and uh, activities. Then when Roger is, Lion Roger is doing the ah. beer tent and then have Dan, Lion Dan, who's helping me and Roger together. And I'm trying to help them with the beer tent too, but um, we're doing all that. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, we're gonna have the carnival set up and then uh, fortunately the roads are gonna be blocked downtown. I'm, I'm sorry folks. I'm, I'm, Ah, it's, it's worth just, it. <laughs> but, uh, we have with patient it, citizens. Yeah, and then we have um, fire marshal coming out just to check everything. 
and make sure we have room for in case there's an incident or something that we can get the emergency needs if we need them out there. But uh, it's something we have to do, but we're going to do it and uh, plan to have everything packed up by Sunday night and afternoon, get it all cleaned up and get the streets back open as soon as we can. Yeah, well, you guys do an amazing job with that. But for, the, for that scavenger hunt, just for those, because obviously a lot of people, those kids are out of school, they're looking for ways to occupy them. So I just want to make sure that this information is clear to them. On the scavenger hunt, they just show up or do they, is there any pre-registration they need to do for no, that? They, um, we're just going to meet downtown right at Flint and Broadway uh, at noon on Saturday. Okay. And we're going to have some volunteers. Uh, I'll be out there too. Um, just uh, we'll, we'll make announcements for it. And okay. then uh, we have the sit kid site trailer. So if uh, parents need their get their uh, kids' eyes checked. Uh, a lot of uh, schools and doctors are using the uh, test results as a clearance for their vision test and all that. It's fantastic. And then uh, the, for the adults, uh, Friday night and Saturday night, we have live entertainment in the beer tent, unfortunately. I'm sorry, guys. It's adults only after 8 p.m. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, just, just well, I'm going to try and follow. sneak in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll have to talk to the other lions about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roger, Roger might, he might, he yeah, might right, put yeah. his hand up. <laughs> yeah, and, you're a politician now. You've got to be careful uh, with yeah, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of my, hey, one of my favorite, um, uh, I love to volunteer, love to be involved in things, and uh, I've bartended a, a few times for uh, the beer tent, ah. and that is a lot of fun. I mean, it's busy. You are working. You're a sweaty mess because, I mean, you have to keep up a pace. Those lines, uh, you know, uh, will form if you don't keep up. But mm -hmm. um, you guys do such a good job of drawing people downtown, which we know roll over to the businesses and support them. So uh, really thankful that we have such a, um, an active group of lions here in Orion to uh, continue to, to make it uh, the wonderful place it is. Yeah. As we uh, wind things down here, do you want to give out some quick contact information if anyone has any questions or are interested in membership? Where can they go? Um, our website, lakeorionlions.org. Um, it's newly updated, so it's got lots of new information. One of our newer members was able to spend quite a bit of time updating it. Um, and also follow us on Facebook. Yep. That's that's the best place to get updated information. Um, and our uh, calendar events are up there too. So, and then um, there's, uh, we meet every first and third Wednesday um, of the month, except for July and August is our off season. But um, people who wanna come out and volunteer or join up, uh, we're, we're taking invitations uh, for anyone that wants to come. They can call our number um, or they can come to Johnny Black's on the first or third Wednesday of the month. In fact, tomorrow. Tomorrow night's our tomorrow night's last, our last meeting of the meeting. year. And oh, wow. so we're open. Uh, come on out, take a look, let us know. We'll give you an application and then um, we can give you information more like that. You can also contact us through our uh, website or even our Facebook and we'll uh, gladly Accept it as accept people and all that. We even have a lioness club too. Okay, great. All right, well, thanks for t coming out, guys. You're doing great work in the community, and we're happy to help you spread the word, get the word out of, of what we you do. We appreciate doing. all you do to help support yeah, our thanks projects. Thanks for helping us too, because without you, we our word wouldn't get out. <laughs> we, yeah. we do our best. Thanks for coming out. Thank you, uh, guys.